Inch by inch, row by row, gonna make this garden grow. All it takes is a rake and a hoe and a piece of fertile ground. Inch by oh, inch. Oh, hey there. Row Good morning, beautiful people. It has been more than a year since we experienced the COVID-19 pandemic, which led us to find various ways of utilizing our time, one of which is gardening, which is good for the planet. But when will we ever realize that there has to be a balance between plants and us individuals? Let me ask you a question. If we were to plant a tree without changing anything, would that be enough to sustain our planet? No, and here's why. According to a video posted by the Australian Academy of Science in 2019, there are currently over 7.6 billion individuals, with that number expected to grow by 9.8 billion by 2050. Our enormous population impacts the environment in two major ways. Number one is use of resources and ecosystem services, such as land, food, water, air, and fossil fuels. Number two is the production of waste products as a result of consumption, such as air and water pollutants and greenhouse gases. Life expectancy has also increased by approximately 20 years since 1960. While that's great for individuals and families, it means we consume resources and produce waste even faster. Today, we are consuming resources around 1.7 times faster than they can be generated. This means we essentially need 1.7 Earths, 170% of the Earth, to support our mass consumption and waste production. Going back to our question, if all of us were able to plant at least one tree every single day without changing anything else, would that be enough for us to be sustainable? Today, we will be looking at one critical factor that hinders us from achieving sustainable development, and that is population growth. Let's look at our population projections. Jacques Cousteau, a well-known French explorer, once said that population growth is the primary environmental damage source. One may quickly summarize that it would be logical in a sense, especially looking at it in a microeconomic setting, like the demands in a hospital wherein focusing on fewer patients improves the quality of healthcare. But if making our world a better place would be that easy, then why didn't we just set laws like China's one-child policy before our world population would be where it is today? According to our worldindate.org, in the 1800s, the population reached 1 billion people. As of today, we are about to reach the 8 billion mark. Around 108 billion people have ever lived and stepped foot in our planet, meaning today's population makes up to 7% of all individuals that were able to be part of our world. Now, what year did our growth rate peak? The global population growth rate reached at a peak in 1962 to 1963 with an annual growth rate of 2.2%. We can conclude that the global population is not growing exponentially, which is a good thing because the United Nations projects that the yearly increase of people every year is to decline by around 1 million. In terms of the various regions that we have in this world, Asia was always the biggest in number of terms of population, and the regions with the fastest population growth over the last two centuries is North and South America, respectively. The top five most populous countries till today is China, India, the United States, Indonesia, and Brazil. And despite China being the world's populous country for the past centuries, it is projected that India will overtake China within this decade. Alone. Growth rates have slowed since the 1960s, yet diversity exists between countries and regions. For example, we go to Western Europe where its growth rates are currently close to zero. But yet in Sub-Saharan Africa, its rates remain higher than 3%. As we go back to our statistic earlier, it is higher than the peak growth of the world's population growth. There has been a divergence in growth rates. Despite the numbers and figures highlighted, what does this all mean and how does this affect society? Resources are limited, the world is finite. The rate of change in a population is an important viability metric describing the cumulative effects of survival and mortality over time. 
All aspects in each individual's livelihood is affected. Here are some examples. Quantifying population growth rates is one of the most important components in the management of freshwater fishes. It can also evaluate the likely persistence of populations given environmental change and the effectiveness of different management strategies. Despite this, the rate of population growth is extremely difficult to measure. Space, food, and resources in a large world population is truly one of the hardest challenges that our generation faces today. Knowing this, let's look at the factors that need attention now. The late Steve Jobs once said that to find the solution is to first define the problem correctly. We need the people to be educated that overpopulation is a problem. Religious groups such as the Catholic Church and other groups until today believe that reproduction is freedom and that the greatest good is the most significant number. To be conscious of population growth makes us see these seven factors looked upon by the United Nations Population Fund. Maternal and newborn health, family planning, education, fertility rate, life expectancy, harmful practices, and the sex ratio. All population growth factors are interrelated and is essential to be solved now as it affects our today and tomorrow. This calls us to act accordingly as citizens, as the youth. And how do we solve this issue? How do we act now? Let's look at this then. Here, population is growing. So these two billions will, in the next decades, increase to three billions and then will thereafter increase to four billions. There is nothing but the nuclear war of a kind we've never seen that can stop this from happening. Because we already have this in process. But if, and only if, they get out of poverty, they get education, they get improved child survival, they can buy a bicycle and a cell phone and come here, then population growth will stop up there in 2050. We cannot have people on this level looking for food and shoes, because then we get continued population growth. Overcoming poverty is overcoming overpopulation, which is overcoming lack of resources, ensuring sustainability for each and everyone. For us to achieve a sustainable lifestyle by continuously educating, advocating, and inspiring the mantra of the youth advocate to educate individuals on family planning, for individuals to be educated on why overpopulation is a problem. It all takes these little steps to achieve the sustainable development goals and for us to be sustainable as individuals in this one earth that we have. Once again, this is the Youth Advocate. Thank you so much for watching this video.